In this presentation we are going to look at probability distributions with R. This corresponds to introduction to statistics and probability courses that you might encounter in undergraduate studies. So this question is about the normal distribution. Assume that the number of weekly study hours for students at a certain university is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 22 hours and a standard deviation of 6 hours. Okay. So find the probability uh, that a randomly choose, chosen student studies less than 12 hours a week and estimate the percentage of students that study more than 37 hours per week. Okay, because the wording there is just sort of clarifies the fact that it's a bit of, an, a, bit of a stretch to actually use the normal approximation in this context in, in, as if this was a real world example. But let's just go with it for the time being, okay? So x is the number of weekly study hours, a normally distributed random variable with mean mu equal to 22 and standard deviation is equal to 6, sigma equal to 6. When we write that out as a, in mathematically, we would actually state it as follows. x is simulated as normal distribution, n, n for normal there, mu equals 22 and sigma squared equals 36. So just watch out for that. The convention here is to state the variance in this particular part of the notation. But anyway, we have mu here is 22 and sigma is equal to 6. Okay. Now I'm going to use the desk tools R package. There's one particular item in this uh, that I'm going to use that is particularly useful in this package. But in general, it might be there are other things that might be also very useful in that R package. Uh, descriptive statistics tools, essentially, R package. Uh, the maintainer is Andre Signorelli. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That's the Signorelli, actually, I believe. And essentially, I'm going to load their library desk tools. I believe that there are other uh, contributors as well. There's many. It's a great R package. Check it out. Uh, and thanks to all involved. Uh, just as, also as a quick remark, I'm going to try and dovetail this with pen and paper type exercises. So I'm going to not uh, to state the Z score on an ongoing basis on the two questions. Okay, and the Z score is the X value minus mu divided by sigma. So I'm just going to state them. So this would dovetail with a pen and paper exercise when you're looking it up in your tables. So exercise one, find the probability that a randomly student, uh, selected student studies less than 12 hours per week. So here we would use the cumulative distribution function for the normal distribution. So it's P and norm, P norm, okay. The value of interest is 12 and mean equals mu. Mean here is the argument for the P norm function and mu is the value I've provided there. Just watch out for that, that can get confusing. So mu and sigma, as I have them written there, mu and sigma are values that I have assigned, and mean equals and sd equals are parts of the p-norm function that take in values that are assigned. Either I can put in 22 and 6 there, or just save the values on an ongoing basis. Anyway, that is, when I do that, is I get a value of 0 0.04779035. Just as a quick remark, the Z score would correspond to 12 minus mu divided by sigma. That is minus 1.666. So you're, if you're looking at the tables, you go minus 1.66 or probably minus 1.67, uh, and you know work 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 from that accordingly. Okay, the difference of probability is not particularly major. Okay, you should get values close to this either way when you get your uh, final solution uh, final answers okay now this is why I'm using the desk func uh, the desk tools R package there's a particular package here uh, command here function here I like called shade okay now so if you're interested in following up on this there's a lot here but you don't really need this line here the top line is the key one okay so try that out and just see how it goes there. So just close it, have an extra closing bracket there. The extra stuff is just make improve the quality of the plot. Likewise, what this does is applies shading to the curve I'm about to create. Okay, so this will actually specify where it's shaded red and where it's shaded blue and the, the intensity of the shading and so on. So this is very interesting actually. 
So let's see how it looks. Okay, that's really nice. You can do more with it, of course, but that is a great start. This red area down here corresponds to the probability of less than 12 hours a week. So it's about 4.7%, 0.047, okay? And you just notice there that it would join the x-axis around study hours x equals 12, okay? So the shaded area is what that corresponds to uh, the probability of studying less than or equal to 12 hours per week. I think that's very nice, a nice visual compliment. The second question is, estimate percentage of students that study more than 37 hours a week. So there's two ways we could do it. We could either go one minus P norm, that one minus the cumulative distribution function, uh, 37 mu equals uh, mean equals mu, standard deviation equals sigma, okay? Just like we've done before. But here we're getting the upper tail value, the complement essentially. So 1 minus gives us 0 0.00620965. We also can use this an alternative approach, lower tail equals false, which is to say the upper tail. Okay, and that gives us the same probability value there. The Z score is going to be 37 minus mu divided by sigma, and that is 37 minus 22 divided by 6, 2.5. Okay, likewise, you can have a look at that. It's more or less the same as before. Just what I've done here is I've adjusted the breaks, the cutoff points for the intervals that are get shaded. I have switched the color order, so it's blue and red, and I have switched the intensity there. This part is the same as before. This just sets out the curve before we add additional components to it. And there we have it there. Okay, so the shaded area, the red shaded area here corresponds to the probability of studying more than 37 hours per week. And you can just sort of see that that is approximately x equals 37 there. In fact, it is x equals 37, okay? So, uh, that's it, yeah, that's it. Okay, we'll leave it there.